Hello everyone. In the previous video we have discussed the issue of multicollinearity where we basically had a sensitivity problem in that sense that we had many regressors and many parameters and it was not really clear which parameter regressor pair has been important to fit some data in a significant manner. And this multicollinearity issue can occur in practice quite often so that's why Today we are going to discuss a simple and straightforward addition to the linear least squares uh, solution in order to compensate for such multicollinearity issues. If we discuss the standard ordinary least squares problem and try to visualize this multicollinearity problem in the uh, parameter space, here I'm assuming a very simple uh, problem with just two parameters, w1 and w2, then we can represent the previous multicollinearity issue as uh, the following. Let's suppose our w star, or let's call it w o l s, so the solution of the OLS problem would be here, and in this uh, context of multicollinearity, we will basically find that our cost contours are, for example, like these ellipses. So these are the cost contours. So contours of our costs y minus z times w. And since this is not like a circle, but let's say a very flatted uh, ellipsoid, we can basically find that along these main axes, the parameter sensitivity is quite low. So that means I can basically trade in different combinations of uh, W1 and W2 without losing my loss, without losing much of my cost function, right? So it's very insensitive to changes uh, here of W1 and W2, which is also just a visual representation of our multicollinearity problem of the previous uh, lecture. And the idea of rich regression is to compensate for this issue by adding a penalty term here to our loss function. And this penalty term, which we're going to add, is some weighting factor lambda. So lambda is just a scalar weighting factor times the squared Euclidean metric of W, so of our parameters itself. So what does that basically mean is that we will basically sum up all the squares of the parameters and multiply them with lambda and basically have a trade-off between a squared penalty loss on the parameters and the ordinary least square solution, right? So this part here is a OLS, and this part here is a parameter penalty. If we visualize this parameter penalty here in the uh, diagram, then basically this is an ideal quadratic loss with respect to the parameters, and this would be like circles, contour circles around the origin. So that might then look something like this, let's say. And the, let's say, uh, the radius, the length of these quadratic uh, circular contours here, they can be scaled with this parameter lambda, right? So here in the uh, first contour which we have, that would be a, quite, a very low lambda, and here one of the larger contours would be a rather high lambda. And for some specific lambda, let's say we have chosen this one, let's say this would be our lambda which we have chosen, then the optimal parameter vector which we are searching by combining these two loss parts, the ordinary least squares loss part and the parameter penalty loss part, is characterized by the tangential point between the contours of the OLS solution and the contour here 
I also write it down, the contour of lambda times w squared loss. And this tangential point which we have here, that would be then our rich regression optimum, so w star rich, where we basically have this best trade-off between minimizing our prediction loss via the ordinary least squares cost function and minimizing the sensitivity issue, this multicollinearity issue with respect to the parameter regression problems, right? So we basically trade in sensitivity or improvement of sensitivity regarding the parameters against a little bit of additional prediction loss. Interestingly, this cost function, which I've cartoonically represented here in this diagram, will also lead to a closed form solution. Why is that? Because this quadratic loss here on W, of course, uh, is also just an additional quadratic term to our already quadratic ordinary least squares loss function. So using the same derivation approach, which we had on the ordinary least squares, we can actually solve for the uh, closed form solution. So we would actually just calculate again the gradient of this new loss function set it to a zero vector and then solve for W. And if we do so, what we get, so I'm not going through the entire derivation again because it's straightforward as already introduced, we would get W star rich for the rich regression problem and this would become Z transpose times Z, so our uh, usual regressor matrix multiplication plus lambda, our penalty weighting term, times the identity matrix, I, the identity matrix, inverse times Z transpose times Y, right? So the only new thing in comparison to the ordinary least squares problem is here this weighting of lambda times the identity matrix in this inverse calculation. And we can still calculate that in a closed form. Interestingly, this will also improve the condition of this matrix, so of this two matrices which are um, added to each other here. And this, in most cases, will also lead to a numerically simpler calculation of this matrix in worth within the parentheses, which is why the rich regression is also useful. Okay, an additional thing which we normally also need to take into account in the rich regression problem is that, especially if we have engineering problems, that the values represented in the outputs, regressors, and parameters, that these values can scale over different value ranges. For example, in one of the models which we have previously seen on the uh, car modeling problem, we have seen that the uh, outputs here have been in the domain of kilowatts, so something in the domains of multiple thousands. Uh, the same for the regressors, but the parameters, they could have been in different ranges between point something and a couple of hundreds. And therefore, we have a quite a diverge, um, uh, not diverge, but a, quite an, a heterogeneous um, numerical value range which we need to cover here. And therefore, what we normally do is uh, we typically standardize our regression matrix Z and our output Y. So that means at the example of Y, we would calculate Y minus the mean of Y to make it bias-free divided by the standard deviation of Y such that Y is bias-free and in a suitable value range by multiplying here through the value um, of the standard deviation. The same could be done for the different regressors. Per regressor, of course, independently, because every regressor would have its own mean and its own standard deviation. And by doing this, we would basically get a more uh, homogeneous kind of value range in Y and Z. And therefore, the meaning of W, which is penalized here, becomes also more um, comparable. Let's 
discuss that also in a little programming example which I've prepared here for you. Uh, in this example, what we basically start with is that uh, we set up a standard ordinary least problem here for a very simple ground truth data. So the ground truth data which we will see here is just a linear model. And we assume that we do not know that's just a uh, linear model, but we try to fit this linear model with different polynomials here of different orders. And if we compare these polynomials of different orders up to order 11 down here against our ground truth data, these dots with a little bit of noise, then we can see that, of course, for the higher um, order polynomials, we can basically observe that there is already some kind of overfitting, which is part of the multicollinearity problem, because the sensitivity between the different parameters is becoming worse and worse. So what can we do? Either we could, of course, reduce the number of polynomial order to a suitable extent. That would be, of course, possible, but this would be in the domain of model selection, a topic which we will discuss uh, in an own independent lecture series later on in this course. But what we can also do is we can apply the rich regression. So basically we do the same polynomial fit here again, but what we do is we consider here our rich regression uh, problem by adding this lambda times identity matrix. And very typically uh, what we said here, we just set lambda to one in this example. However, in practice, lambda would be some kind of a hyperparameter of our regression problem. So that means we would play around with it and tune it heuristically empirically. Here in this case, a lambda of one uh, is already quite okay, as we will see in the next plot, where we compare the rich regression result to the ordinary least squares result. And what you can see here from this curve, that due to this penalty which we apply now to these parameters, that this problem of overfitting, which we had especially here in this area of the ordinary least squares problem, is significantly reduced because we're basically tightening the parameter space. We don't allow such a crazy overfitting, such that even polynomials of higher order, which would be uh, shooting with the big bazooka on this linear data relation, can fit quite well. Okay, with this little yeah, cartoonic programming example, fitting higher order polynomials to a linear regression problem, uh, I hope that you have seen that the rich regression can be helpful in order to compensate, at least in a practical way, for overfitting for multicollinearity. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.